Math 31, let's take a look at how we begin to graph piecewise functions. And before I get into the formal definition, a piecewise function is like saying we're going to take a part of this graph and combo it with a part of that graph and, a, and maybe combo it with a few more graphs. We're going to take pieces of different graphs and then put them on one graph collectively. So here's the formal definition. A piecewise function is a function in which more than one formula is used to define the output. Each formula has its own domain, and the domain of the function is the union of all of these smaller domains. We notate this idea like this. And so we'll have some function defined here and a domain. Function defined here and a domain. Function defined here and a domain. So we're taking a piece of this graph whatever that function may be, for a certain domain. We're taking a piece of this graph, again, for whatever that function may be over this domain, and again, a piece of this graph over this domain. And you can have as many of these formulas as you want. You need at least two to technically be called a piecewise function, but you could have seven, you could have 10. They get pretty messy when you get that many pieces, but there's an infinite possibilities. All right, so with that, we're going to take a look at our first piecewise function. So I want to sketch the graph of f of x where I'm going to take a piece of the graph x plus 1 and a piece of the graph x squared. And the breaking point, the domains, are going to be x is less than 1 and x is greater than 1. So in a way, I want the left half of this graph. And when I say left half, that's because if x is less than 1, you're going to the left of 1. And I want the right half of this graph because at x being 1, I go to the right to be greater than 1. So I want a piece of this one, piece of that one. Now before we get into what this piecewise function looks like, I want to give you guys a visual of what each of these functions look like separately, and then we'll combine them. So I want to graph x plus 1 all on its own, and I want to graph x squared all on its own, and then I want to kind of have a chat about which pieces we're going to take. So I'm going to scoot this up so this definition isn't showing anymore, just so we have all the space in the world, or almost all the space in the world, to graph this. Actually, I barely, I don't think I can get this entire graph in the same view as the function, so I'll just work on the function for right now. So let's say I was going to graph the function f of x equaling x plus 1. All right, so if I'm looking at f of x equaling x plus 1. This is the equation of a line, right? It's of the form mx plus b. So in this case, I know my slope is 1 and my y-intercept is 0, 1. Actually, it's not technically b. It's the y-intercept being 0, b. Excuse me, 0, 1. So my y-intercept is 0, 1. I know I'm getting super technical here, but b in and of itself is 1, and the y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, 1. Okay, I'm just going to sketch that graph real quick. Let me grab my ruler, and we'll sketch it over here. So I would start at 0, 1, let me go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, let me give myself at least some semblance of a scale. Um, start at 0, 1, go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. So my line would look something like this. Now again, this is just a sketch, alright, I'm just kind of drawing it by hand, not even kind of drawing it by hand, I'm drawing it by hand. I don't have a an actual grid, but that's that's a good enough guess as to what my graph looks like. Let me try the other function that's in this piecewise function. Let's try x squared. Now this is a parabola. This is one of your toolkit functions. One of the functions that I'm hoping if you see its equation or its formula that on site you know we've got an upwards facing parabola. So let me go ahead and draw its graph. Hmm. 
Okay, give me a moment to label and scale. So this bad boy starts at the origin. I've got one, one, and negative one, one, and then two, four, and negative two, four, because there's some symmetry there. It looks something like this. Okay, so that's what each of these functions look like separately. And what we wanna do to graph this piecewise defined function is cut these functions off at x equaling one, and I wanna take the left half of the line and combine that with the right half of the parabola, or I could say the left piece of the line and the right piece of the parabola. So here I want the left piece of the line and over here, I would like the right piece of the parabola. And my cutoff point is at x equaling one. So let's go draw in a little barrier around x equaling one so we know where our cutoff is. So x equaling one would be in here, right? This is x equaling one. And over here we have x equaling one. Then in the same spot, x equaling one is right of the origin by one unit. But I wanna be on the line when x is less than one. And again, for x to be less than one, that means I wanna be on the left half of that line. So I want this piece of the line. I don't want the whole line, I just want a little bit of it. I want a piece of it. And on the flip of that, for x to be greater than one, I wanna go with the right piece of the parabola. And what I would like to do on my graph, my solution, is graph the left piece and graph the right piece of the line and the parabola respectively. Now it's always a good idea to figure out what the function value was here. So let me just see what we have. If I was going to plug one into here, one plus one would give me back two. So this is the ordered pair one, two. If I plug one into this bottom piece, one squared is one. So I have the ordered pair one, one. When I go to graph piecewise functions, I usually take whatever this breaking point is or this breaking value and plug it into each piece just to see where I would have wound up. Now, one thing to note, if you look at the domain here, there's no equals to anywhere. This is strictly less than one, this is strictly greater than one, so I'm gonna be using some open dots and nothing got closed in. It was just the way I set this function up. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna scooch this graph up. We might lose sight of the original function but I wanna get our entire graph in view. So let me go ahead and label and scale my axes. And I'll go 10 and 10 just because. All right, so if I wanna go with the left piece, I'm gonna start here at the line at one, two. So go over one, up two. Now I'm gonna put an open dot and I'm putting that open dot because my original function had a strictly less than sign not less than or equal to. And I know I have a slope of one, so I'm gonna fill some points in and let's just draw that. Okay, all right. And let's see, the next point I'm gonna start at is one, one. So let me draw another open dot here. And again, I'm drawing an open dot here because I had X strictly greater than one. If it had been greater than or equal to, I would have filled that in. But we're gonna go with one, one, and then it would have been two, four, and then three, and then we have to go up to nine. And that's what this parabola would have looked like. Ooh, that is skinny, there we go. Okay, so there is the graph of my piecewise function. And in a moment, I'm gonna show you how you can plot these on your calculator if you ever want to. But before we leave this behind, I do wanna talk about the domain and the range here. All right, so let's take a look. We're gonna do domain and range. Now, I see some arrows, so we're gonna go right forever, and this is up forever. So I know some infinities are gonna be popping out. I've got left forever. Oops, that's, yeah, that is left forever. I, can, I know my directions and down forever. All right, so for the domain, you might be thinking, well, let's just go, negative infinity to positive infinity because I have my forever showing up. But keep in mind something funky happened at one. There was no y value. 
if we go back, and I'm going to scooch up and then scooch back down, but if we scooch up to our original function, there was no y value for when x was equal to 1 because there's no less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. It just wasn't here. So 1 is not in my domain. And so yes, officially that isn't one of our three domain issues, but with piecewise functions, you have to keep that in mind. So if I want to rule out 1, I'm going to say this is negative infinity to 1, and then I'm going to go from 1 to infinity. I'm ruling out 1. Okay, I'm going to go down forever and up forever, but I just need to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And if you'll look here, this line, right, even though it has the open dot here, it passed through, it went higher up than this open dot. So there was some overlap, at least in the y values. So there's nothing that I need to rule out of my range because I hit from negative infinity up to 2 here, right, because this was the point 1 comma 2. And then I started back in at 1 comma 1, right? If I write these in, let me just remind you of these values. So since I went all the way up to 2, I covered my base with the 1, right? I do have an x coordinate that gives me a y value of 1. It's specifically the y intercept at 0, 1. So I'm not missing anything from my range. I'm going to go down to up, all of that with infinities. All right, so I'm going to flip over to my computer, and I'm going to show you how you can graph a piecewise function on your calculator. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye. Hey, Math 31. I just want to take a moment and show you how you could graph a piecewise function on your calculator if you want to. You don't have to do this. You might want to just do it by hand. But if you wanted to check yourself, I want you to see that you have this option. So in example four, we were graphing x plus 1, or at least the left half of x plus 1 and the right half of x squared. Again, we're cutting them off at x equaling 1. So let's go over to our y equals. I'm going to clear out what I had before. And let's graph x plus 1 in y sub 1. And then let's do x squared in y sub 2. And I'm going to hit zoom 6. All right, so we see my line and my parabola. But what I'd like to tell my calculator is, hey, right around this cutoff point at x being 1, can you just give me the left half of the line but the right half of the parabola? And it's, it's not at all intuitive how you do this. You'd have to go hunting for it, but here's how you do it. So I'm going to need to put parentheses around this binomial, all right? So let me go ahead and insert. So I'll hit second and delete. I will insert a parentheses, and then I just need to close it out over here. Okay, now we're going to start a new parentheses. So we're going to take the entire function of x plus 1, and with and we do this in parentheses. If you want to add this little inequality, you have to put that inequality in parentheses also. So we're going to type x, and then we need to do x is less than 1, right? So we're telling our calculator, please just graph this piece of the line x plus 1. Now your less than symbol is under your test menu. So you see over that math key, the word test, but it's in blue. So hit second and test. And you see option 5 is your less than. So I would like to graph x plus 1 as long as x is less than 1. Okay, And I need to go adjust x squared also. Now, I don't technically need x squared to be in parentheses because it's not a binomial. It's just a monomial. It's one term. If you want to put it in parentheses, that's great. It won't affect your answer. You do need to put your piecewise domain in parentheses. So we're going to go x. And then I need the greater than symbol. All right, now that's also in test. That is option three. So I want to do x greater than one, and I will close that parentheses. Now when I hit zoom six, you're going to see the left half of my line. And there's the right half of the parabola. And if I head over to my table, it'll do the same thing, except, well, it won't quite do the same thing. It's going to show you all the x values um, let me scroll back this way so you can see it. How, how your calculator does it is you can see that at x equaling 1, it zeroes out the line. It's saying that that doesn't exist anymore, or not technically doesn't exist, it's just it's not graphing it. And you can see on the flip of that, before x equaling 1, the left half, it wasn't graphing any of the parabola values either. So you see on the left half of x equaling 1, there are all my y values according to the line. And then when I pass x equals 1, right, I go 4, 9, all of those squared values. All right. Okay, so with that, 
that's that's how we can graph a piecewise function and you can graph as many pieces as you have when we get to example five admittedly we're obviously not there yet there are three pieces so you could light up y1 y2 y3 and get a good idea of what that graph would look like okay i'll see you in a few gang bye